everybody and welcome back. Today we continue chapter 7 of Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Now last time we met we saw a battle take place between the lion and the unicorn and we saw possibly two familiar characters from Alice in Wonderland sneaked in there somewhere. Did you spot them? I did. Anyway, if you're ready, let's continue the tale. For a minute or two, Alice stood silent, watching him. Suddenly, she brightened up. Look! Look! She pointed eagerly. There's the White Queen running across the country. <laughs> she came flying out of the wood over yonder. How fast those queens can run! There's some enemy after her, no doubt, the king said without even looking round. The wood's full of them. But aren't you going to run and help her? Alice asked, very much surprised at his taking it so quietly. No use, no use, said the king. She runs so fearfully quick. You might as well try to catch a bandersnatch. But I'll make a memorandum about her, if you like. Oh, she's a... Dear good creature, he repeated softly to himself as he opened his memorandum book. Do you spell creature with a double E? At this moment, the unicorn sauntered by them with his hands in his pockets. I had the best of it this time, he said to the king, just glancing at him as he passed. <laughs> a little, uh, a little, the king said rather nervously. You shouldn't have run him through with your horn, you know. No, oh, it didn't hurt him, said the unicorn carelessly, and he was going on when his eye happened to fall upon Alice. He turned around rather instantly and for some time stood looking at her with an air of deepest disgust. <laughs> what is this? he said at last. This is a child! Heya replied eagerly, coming in front of Alice to introduce her, and spreading out both his hands towards her in an Anglo-Saxon attitude. We only found it today. It's as large as life and twice as natural. I always thought they were fabulous monsters, said the unicorn. Is it alive? It can talk, said Heya solemnly. The unicorn looked dreamily at Alice and said, Talk, child. Alice could not help her lips curling up into a smile as she began. Do you know, I always thought unicorns were fabulous monsters too. I never saw one alive before. Well, now that we have seen each other, said the unicorn, if you'll believe in me, I'll believe in you. Is that a bargain? Yes, if you like, said Alice. Come, fetch out the plum cake, old man, the unicorn went on, turning from her to the king. None of your brown bread for me. Certainly, certainly, the king muttered and beckoned to Heya. Open the bag, he whispered. Quick! No, 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 not, not that one, that's full of hay. Heya took a large cake out of the bag and gave it to Alice to hold, whilst he got a dish and carving knife out. How they all came out of it, Alice could not guess. It was just like a conjuring trick, she thought. The lion had joined them while this was going on. He looked very tired and sleepy, and his eyes were half shut. What's this? he said, blinking lazily at Alice, and speaking in a deep, hollow tone that sounded like the tolling of a great bell. Ah! What is it now? the unicorn cried eagerly. You'll never guess! I couldn't! The lion looked at Alice wearily. Eh, eh. Are you an animal? Eh. Vegetable or mineral, he said, yawning at every other word. It's a fabulous monster, the unicorn cried out before Alice could reply. 
Then hand round the plum cake, monster, the lion said, lying down and putting his chin on his paws. And sit down, both of you, he said to the king and the unicorn. Fair play with the cake, you know. The king was evidently very uncomfortable at having to sit down between the two great creatures, but there was no other place for him. What a fight we might have for the crown now, the unicorn said, looking slyly up at the crown, which the poor king was nearly shaking off his head he trembled so much. I should win easily, said the lion. Oh, I'm not so sure of that, said the unicorn. Why, I beat you all around the town, you chicken, the lion replied angrily, half getting up as he spoke. Here, the king interrupted to prevent the quarrel going on. He was very nervous, and his voice quite quivered. All round the town, he said. That is a good long way. Did you go by the old bridge or the marketplace? You get the best view by the old bridge. I'm sure I don't know, the lion growled out as he lay down again. There was too much dust to see anything. What a time the monster is cutting up that cake! Alice had seated herself on the bank of a little brook with the great dish on her knees and was sawing away diligently with the knife. It's very provoking, she said in reply to the lion. She was getting quite used to being called the monster. I've cut several slices already, but they always join on again. You don't know how to manage looking glass cakes. The unicorn remarked, hand it round first, then cut it afterwards. This sounded nonsense, but Alice very obediently got up and carried the dish round, and the cake divided itself into three pieces as she did so. Now cut it up, said the lion as she returned to her place with the empty dish. I say, this isn't fair, cried the unicorn as Alice sat with the knife in her hand, very much puzzled how to begin. The monster has given the lion twice as much as me. She's kept none for herself anyhow, said the lion. Do you like plum cake? <sighs> monster. But before Alice could answer him, the drums began. Where the noise came from, she couldn't make it out. The air seemed full of it and it rang through and through her head till she felt quite deafened. She started to her feet and sprang across the little brook in her terror and had just time to see the lion and the unicorn rise to their feet with angry looks at being interrupted in their feast before she dropped to her knees and put her hands over her ears, vainly trying to shut out the dreadful uproar. If that doesn't drum them out of town, she thought to herself, nothing ever will. Ooh, uh, getting a little tense there, methinks, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. But I don't know about you, but I'm excited for tomorrow's episode. Tune in tomorrow to see what happens next. My name's been Sasha Cooper, and this has been Alice Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Take care, everybody, and stay safe. Bye-bye.